All right, what's up YouTube? This is Joe Kempsey, and today just gonna be doing a quick video, quick tutorial on what settings I use for Lucas Chess, which is a graphical user interface or GUI that I used to run Stockfish on for my Stockfish Chess videos. So in this video, hopefully I'll show you guys what settings are best for Stockfish, how to use Lucas Chess, and how you can use it to use Stockfish on your very own. Uh, but the first thing you'll need to do is actually install this. So I'll put all links in the description below, but you'll need a GUI. I use Lucas Chess, but it may not work on other operating systems. I'm on Windows, so if you're on Windows, I'd say definitely cop this one. There are other GUIs out there that are free, and I'll put links in the description below to those if you're having trouble using Lucas Chess. But once you have a GUI, you'll need Stockfish itself, which you can get from stockfishchess.org. So once you have the engine itself installed, as well as this GUI, go ahead and open it up. So... Um, I do have to apologize in advance. This video is going to be more so tailored for Lucas Chess users as, you know, I'm going to be showing this GUI only in this video. But the good thing is that the settings for Stockfish are more or less universal, so it won't really matter what uh, GUI you're using here. But once you have yours open, you know, in Lucas Chess, head over to Tools, Engines, External Engines, and this is where you're going to want to add the Stockfish engine that you installed from stockfishchess.org. Just go ahead and click on it. This is the almighty Stockfish engine application here. Go ahead and open it up and you'll be greeted by these settings here. Don't feel too overwhelmed by these settings as you only need to change a few of these. In fact, you can just leave these default if you just want to use Stockfish recreationally. You don't need to change all of these settings. But if you want to do what I do, which is set Stockfish to think for a fixed def or you know a fixed amount of time, then you do need to change a few of these if you want to optimize Stockfish's performance. So um, the ones you have to change are hash, threads, ponder, and just make sure you have these two checked and you're good to go. So now I'll briefly go over which ones need to be changed. So starting with hash, to figure out what to set your hash table size to be, open up the task manager, bang, click on performance, go to memory, and take your computer's RAM size and pull the calculator, like so. Take this size and multiply by 1024. So we're basically just converting this from gigabytes to megabytes, as this number here is in megabytes. Um, but what I do, and it depends on you know how you want to use Stockfish. Like if you want to set it to 50 def, then you do benefit from having a larger hash table size. If you just want to play Blitz games, you can just leave it at like you know 256 or 512 megabytes for hash. You don't have to use you know all of your available RAM. But basically what I do is I take my RAM size. I just divide this by four. I take a fourth of this amount. This, and that is what I set my hash table size to be. So again, if you're not playing stock at 50 def, if you're doing a lower def, you can just leave this at like, you know, 256, 512, or even 16 or 64. A lower amount, so it's using less RAM. Um, but you do want to set it to a power of two as a hash table will perform more optimally if it's set to a power of two. So just keep that in mind when you set your hash table size. So for my case, I use 2048, but I would say use a lower power of two if you are running Stockfish at lower than 50 depth. So that is your hash. Next up is the threads. Figure out what to say your threads to be. Head over to CPU up top here. Take your core size, and I just take one or two cores lower. You can use all of the cores you have available, but and it's similar to memory, you don't want to use necessarily all this you have available so you don't you know, overheat your system as you're going to have other things open that's going to use up RAM and CPU. So just keep that in mind when you set these so you don't go overboard. So in my case, I'm just going to use four threads, which are two lower than the amount of cores that I have. Um, ponder, I check this because basically what Ponder is, is that Stockfish will think when it's your turn to move. So Stockfish will basically always be thinking. And with this checked, you should overall see better performance from Stockfish. And just make sure you have these two checked and you are good to go. And you don't have to worry about the other settings here. Um, these are for when you want to play like Blitz games or time games against Stockfish where both sides have time. Then these settings come into play. But if you just want to test, you know, Stockfish's performance, then you don't need to adjust these settings. So I just leave them all as default. Um, but once you have your settings, go ahead and click Accept. Okay, so I already have an engine with the same name, so let's just say V2. So there you go, you have calibrated Stockfish. And now I'm going to go ahead and, I guess we'll leave this open just so you can see the effect that running Stockfish has on your CPU and memory. 
Um, but there are multiple ways to start a game in Lucas Chess. What I do most of the time is just hit play up top here, play against an engine. You can select the engine you want to play, so Stockfish. And then limits of engine thinking, this is where you set, you know, how long you want Stockfish to think or to what depth you want Stockfish to think to. So, I mean, you can theoretically give Stockfish like 10,000 seconds per move if you just want to wait and really get just a glimpse of how strong Stockfish is and how crazy deep this engine can calculate. Um, but I really just use fixed depth for my videos. I set it to 50 and just leave it at that. You could set this again to a higher number, but it's going to take hours per move. So just leave this at 50 for my case. Um, side you play with, I just play the side opposite of the side that Stockfish is playing. So let's say Stockfish plays from here. I just relay that back to chess.com and just, it goes back and forth for the duration of the game. So um, help configuration, I just turn this off. It'll notify you every single move, whether or not your move was a mistake. Um, if you want to use this for learning, you can turn it on, but it's more or less just annoying to use if you are testing Stockfish strength. So I just leave this off. Time, I leave this off. Again, this is where, you, if you want, you could play like a blitz game in Stockfish, but I just leave this off. Initial moves, this is where you can actually set up a custom position. So you see my last video, we did Rook Odds. You can set up you know, any custom position here. You can put the king in the center, just something crazy like that. And the advanced options, these are the ones that we have already calibrated. Um, so set strength, the best move, and never resign because we want Stockfish to go all out at all times. And um, even if it's losing, just make it play, you know? Um, and you could change your hash table size here as well if you want to like change the depth. Let's say we want to change this 25 fixed stuff, then maybe a larger hash table size is not most optimal. We could change this to, let's say, 256, since it's a lower power of 2, and just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, those are the settings that I use for creating a game in Lucas Chess. So press accept here, and here you have it. The game is started, and if you get tired of waiting, there are some cool features here, like Play Now, where Stockfish will immediately make a move. So that's nice if you want to pause this. Um, so, I mean, you can see the effect that this has, actually that this runs, you can see the direct effect it has on memory and CPU. Um, well, we're, we're using less hash, so I guess it's not the best you know, way to test the effect it has on CPU and memory, because it's not using as much since we're using lower hash, but let's say we want to um, you know, jack up the def here, turn this to 2048, and now I want to start a game, you can see um, the effects, the staggering effects this has on memory and CPU usage. So just be careful with this. Uh, make sure you don't go overboard. You can go 100% CPU. It's not the end of the world, but you know, just make sure you don't go overboard on the memory. But overall, I mean, that's how I use Stockfish, how I calibrate it, and how I set up the game in Lucas Chess. Again, you can hit play now here, and Stockfish will immediately move. And another cool feature is you can double click the moves here on the right and see whether or not they were good moves or bad moves immediately. Like here we get an instant reading from the engine, but if you want to make the engine think longer evaluating the moves, then you can set a certain duration or depth for this where Stockfish analyzes the move that was played. So just a nice cool feature there as well. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much how I use Lucas Chess for my videos. And lastly, just to go over some extra features that are in Lucas Chess that you may find useful. First one here is more of a personalization thing. You can go to Options, Colors, Main Board, and change the board style, even the arrow style as well. And you can change the colors of the overall interface through here. Like general background color, we can make this green, for example. Click Accept. And there you go, you have a nice green background. So just a nice way to personalize your experience with Lucas Chess with the colors. Um, and last things to mention in tools, PGN, you could paste the PGN here, like copy it from chess.com, for example, and paste it here. If you want to, you know, let Stockfish take over a certain point of a game, you can do that with the paste PGN feature. And create your own game is a last cool feature I'll mention here. All right, the green is a bit, I think a bit, a bit too much for me, but um, you could basically, this is like a freestyle analysis board here with the create your own game feature. And 
The cool thing is, is that, you know, again, you can analyze every single move by double clicking here and getting a reading from Stockfish. Yeah, the, the green is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, you can do that. And another thing is you can click play current position through utilities, play current position. And you can set up a game like this, but it'll basically take over the custom position that you set up. So this is definitely a nice feature as well that Lucas Chess has. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I do hope that you have learned something from this. And if you have any questions or comments below, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But for now, take care guys. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.